Hello, hello. We're gonna go over the axe today. The axe. I've been playing with it for about uh, three days pretty heavily. I've gotten, um... Pretty much everything, uh, well, everything is 380 or above. Everything's 380 or above. I do not have the Shroud one crafted yet. But everything else, everything else, 380 or above. I love it. I love it. It's fun. It's a completely different play style. Um, and it keeps, if you play it properly, it keeps you close to the behemoths. And it gives you big numbers. Big numbers. It also causes you to um, get some cardio in. Because if you miss your axe throws, you gotta, <laughs> you got to run. You got to play fetch. Fetch! Get my axe back. I mean, you don't have to. If you're running Flight of Ruin, it'll come back to you. It'll come back to you. But who uses Flight of Ruin? No one. No one. Don't use it. Use Grim Onslaught. Mm -hmm. But hit your target. Or go for a jog. Ignore the, the perks on screen. Um, I typically don't go out and copy people's builds. Um, I'll listen to some feedback and stuff here and there and find out what people are doing and why they're doing it. Um, actually, there's a lot of diverse builds in this game, which is kind of cool. Um, there's typically not one build that people are using, which is refreshing, which is refreshing. I know that people will reference some of the giants and what they are using, but there's a lot of players that aren't actually using that, especially a lot of the newer players, because the builds that you find on YouTube from, from the partner players um, are all kind of similar, but they still are kind of unique, uh, which is, again, refreshing. But um, it requires it requires it re requires uh, quite a bit of skill, right? So the average player that picks up the game um, that will never get to that level, or the player that hasn't put in the time and effort to get to that level, gets penalized for for running some of those those top builds, and that promotes people coming up with other types of builds, like more survivability type builds, uh, iceborne builds, which is insanely good for somebody that's new or mediocre or even good at the game. The Iceborne combined with Rage combined with Wild Frenzy is disgustingly dirty. Now, I've been playing with a lot of different builds and in the last couple weeks, especially with the Axe for the last couple days, um, I can't get fast times, like good fast times. I can get sub five minutes, sub four minutes with Iceborne. I have a really hard time doing it under three. Whereas if I play with the uh, the big boy builds and I do well, which is not every match, uh, I can I can beat most things in under three. Not most, but some of the fights that I'm doing in under three minutes, whereas I can't with Iceborne. So there's a trade-off. Are you just playing to win? Are you playing to have fun? Are you playing not to die? Do you want to do okay damage with friends? Uh, Iceborne is a very solid way to play. I know it's not the topic of the video, we're on the axe, but it's one of the things I've been doing quite a bit with the axe in the last couple of days while leveling everything is playing with different builds, trying to figure it out. And in regards to builds, specifically regardless above everything else with the axe, attack speed is your best friend for the axe. Um, and that's why this build over here is what we switched to last night. I was just trying to get attack speed, not really looking at damage, but I'm trying to get attack speed to see how many times I can get a level 3 charged attack off on a behemoth, right? Because most of the time I can't even get a level 3 unless they're staggered or knocked down. So I'm running Evasive Fury, where when I dodge through an attack, I get attack speed. The way you play the axe is you want to stay on the behemoth's ankles the entire... Well, you want to do that with every weapon, but this one specifically, you want to stay on it, and as it attacks or swings, you roll through it, and you come out of your roll, and you go into a charge. Because after they attack, they have two or three seconds before they attack again, so you want to be right there with them. You don't want to spend that time running back to the target. So you want to roll with the attack, roll through the attack, charge, and then see if you can get a three hitter off. And I wasn't able to do it every time, and I want to be able to do it every time for meter gain so I can get the extra multiplier and damage. Uh, we'll go over all, what all that means here in a second. So I was trying to do attack speed. So I've got molten drops that are dropping. When I dodge through attacks, molten, by the way, is a pain in the butt. I know people love it, but it poops out your backside. So if you're fighting a behemoth and you swing and it poops out, I either have to slowly walk backwards and try to strife and pick it up or I have to turn around, run, pick it up, and run back, consuming... Why doesn't it poop out in front of you? I don't understand. What's what? Why? Why does it? Why does it shoot up? Is that something new? Has it always been this way? Is this a bug? Am I the only one complaining about it? I hate it. I hate it. It seems counterintuitive. Um, maybe if I was running plus six, it might poop out in 360 around me. But it. I don't know. Not a fan. But the buff I'm a fan of. But having to pick it up, I'm not a fan. Um, 
And then conduit, so when I pop my lantern, I get attack speed, etheric attunement, because after like two two level three charges, I feel like sometimes I get a full full meter. Um, it could be three three level charges. But then I can pop, and usually I can pop conduit, especially if it's staggered, uh, and I'm doing level three charge, hit, level three charge, hit, level three charge, hit, level three charge, hit. I um, constantly have my lantern pop, so then I've got all that extra attack speed, which is amazing. It's amazing. So that's what I was trying last night, was just to see how often I could keep my attack speed up for level three charges. Now, let's get into the X. We're going to show... It's got two modifiers, Flight of Ruin and Grim Onslaught. Flight of Ruin, they're both cool, right? Um, I'm not a fan of Flight of Ruin, personally. I know some people like it. The majority of people actually use Grim Onslaught. It's, um, like I said earlier, it's just amazing. Amazing, right? Uh, Flight of Ruin is kind of cool, but I don't like it. I don't like it. What it does, you throw it out like a boomerang. Throw it. Rawr! And then it goes out, and then it comes back. And you can, people, I've seen people do tricks like this, where it continues to hit the behemoth. Um, there's cool things you can do with it, right? The other thing you can do with it while it's out flying around like a possessed demon spinning crazy axe, uh, you can, so Q on PC is your special ability. So the same button, if you tap it again while it's out and about, it'll instantly call it back and you do a POW ground pound, right? So you need to be able to land that ground pound. A lot of times I can't. I don't know why. I have the hardest time landing that. I'll whiff off to the side. I miss. I don't. I don't like it. I don't like it. I haven't tried it since the the update. There was an, uh, the last update. They fixed positioning. So if this tree was the behemoth, if I'm stuck, I'm stuck to it. It's a whatever they did. They made it a little too sticky. But it's. I definitely prefer this over what the game used to be. So you literally have to walk completely off of it to walk off. It's the same with the behemoths now. Before the update, you could literally even be looking straight at it and your character would start turning off and walking. And you would, you would, so when you're attacking, you'd constantly be turning. So a lot of the times when I would do that jumping attack, I'd be running at the behemoth, jump, and it would turn away from the behemoth and I'd land off. Like if the tree was the behemoth, I'd run, jump, hit it, and it would hit the ground here. I used to hate it. Um, so probably now with this new sticky, whatever they did to make you stick to your targets, um, I could probably land and hit the target now. But I don't like it like I do Grim Onslaught. Um, why it's important to land your ground pound. So Grim Onslaught and Flight of Ruin. This is Flight of Ruin. You have to land your ground pound. So if you hit your behemoth with the axe, but you don't land the ground pound, it doesn't count towards leveling up your meter. What does the meter mean? Up below my stamina bar, you'll see a bar. It goes across with the circle at the end, right next to the special ability. Right now it has two dashes in it. That will turn into a level one, a level two, and a level three. At level three, you're doing roughly, from what I've read, 50% uh, extra damage from everything that you do. So you have to fill that bar up by doing charged attacks. And then when it gets... Filled all the way, it turns white. That means it's primed, ready to level up. You have to land that ground pound with Flight of Ruin, or if it's Grim Om Slot, you just have to hit your target, and then it levels up. Then you have to grow your meter again, doing charged attacks, and then land another ground pound or throw to go to level 2, then level 3. Show you Grim Onslaught, BRB. All right, we're back, and I got Grim Onslaught. Throw the axe forward, damaging enemies in its path before landing a distance away. Hits grant 15 meter. Catching the axe grants 30 meter. Alright. So you throw it. Yeet! I just learned that word. That's how hip I am. So now I use it out of goofiness. Alright, so I missed my target. Yeah, I gotta go fetch it. Okay. So one of the things that also we were talking about the other day, a lot of people didn't notice. Look below my character. There's a ring. I don't know when this was added, but I just noticed it the other day. Like, literally yesterday. <laughs> so I don't know if it showed up in the update or if it's always been there. But now it points to where your axe is. Also, as you just noticed, if you're too stupid to find it, or you're too lazy, or you don't understand that you don't have your axe anymore, and you're still walking around spamming buttons, you're not paying attention to damage numbers, trust me, I've seen it happen, it'll appear back in your hand eventually. Same thing if you throw it off a cliff. If you throw it off a cliff. Yeet! It's gone. Bam! Okay, so it does come back. You're not SOL. Right? Let's see if I can force it. Sometimes if you hit a wall, you can force it to bounce back. Um, when it bounces back, 
off of a behemoth or a wall, you want to catch it and you'll get more meter gain. That's what it says. So when you hit your target, you get meter. And the meter, again, is your bar. You're trying to progress so you can level it up. Um, so you throw it. It'll bounce. You want to run to that circle and pick it up before it hits the ground. Not pick it up. You want to catch it. Okay. Uh, and that'll give you more meter gain. That was look at the moves. The moves. Oh, tab works now. Oh, yeah. Tab, 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 tab. So uh, what I always refer to as, as light and heavy attacks is just kind of a reference point when we're talking to people in chat. Everybody kind of gets your your X button or your left click is your light attack and your right button is your heavy attack. So it's a, it's a good reference versus left click, right click, and then you've got console kids with X and Y and then square and triangle, X and triangle, X and circle is... I don't know. I don't have a PlayStation. But you see what I'm saying? So usually I just refer to light and heavy. Um... Axe is vertical and horizontal. There's not a light and heavy. They both pretty much have the same as tax swing speeds and whatnot. One is vertical, one's horizontal. Vertical, horizontal. So um, kind of focused on single target or if something's above, you can hit high and low. Uh, horizontal is more of a cleave, which means you're going to hit anything around in a, in a horizontal attack. And then um, both of them, you've got verticals. And you've got horizontals, a four hit with the five repeatable and a four hit. Okay, so we'll do the vertical first. And what it shows is you can do a charge attack. You can then link it with a single, followed by a second charge, link. Same thing down here with horizontal, charge, link, charge, link, right? So the charge attack, charging has three charges. Like I was stating earlier about trying to find attack speed. And attack speed affects how fast they tick through your charges. So, I don't have any attack speed right now. One, two, three. If you hold it too long, it'll go ahead and release on its own. You don't want to do that. You want to release it on your third. So, if you release it on your third, one, two, three, boom! I'm glowing orange. I'm glowing orange, and you see this beam of orange shoot out from around me. This is something I didn't know. Um, actually, I learned this from watching one of Odo's videos. Um... And then the other thing about Odo's video, he calls it a resolve hit. And I can't find anywhere in the game where it talks about this. It doesn't talk about what's happening when you release it. It doesn't, it, there's, there's nowhere. So I don't know if resolve is a term that the community has come up with um, or not. I typically don't call it resolve. Nowhere in the game does it say resolve. But for giving it a name and listening to one of the top players, that's what, that's what he calls it. What it does, so if you hold up with the one, two, and you release it, and you're swinging, and a behemoth attacks at the same time, you might get a hit off. You probably won't. The behemoth is going to knock you on your ass, and you're not going to do any damage. Okay, so when you get to a level three, and you release it on the third, whoosh, during that orange phase, you are unstaggerable. It's a resolve hit. So because you're unstaggerable, you can get your hit off. Unless the behemoth really is like rolling through your body and you miss your attack. But if if he's just swinging his arm and you're looking at him and you swing and he swings, you won't get staggered. You won't get interrupted. You'll take the hit. It'll mess up your health. If you're running predator, it affects your predator. But you'll still hit your attack. So getting to a level 3 is good for doing damage. If you're running a predator build, it's really uh, you still want to be able to dodge and do things. Um, but if you're just trying to get your combo off and he's about to hit you, it's good to get to that point. And the sooner you can get to that point to release it, A, you'll either hit him before he'll hit you, or you'll get to the point where you're both swinging at the same time. I can promise you right now, most behemoths are not going to let you charge this long. They will attack, especially at heroic difficulty where they're attacking more frequently. So, you want attack speed to get the, so you'll charge one, two, three quicker than one, two, three. Now again, you can release it at any time, and each charge gets stronger and stronger and builds more meter, okay? But a level 3 is ideal. You don't always want to go for it. I have a problem right now micromanaging my level 3s. I literally spend a lot of time charging level 3, and if I don't get it, I cancel it. So what I mean by canceling is you can't really dodge cancel in the game with any weapon, but you can dodge cancel a charge. So as you're charging, you don't have to let go and then try to dodge, right? If the, if the behemoth is, you're going to get hit. You're going to get hit. If you're charging and the behemoth gets ready to attack, just roll out of it. Charge again. Roll out of it. You can cancel it by rolling. So this is how you can stay right up. If this tree is the behemoth, you can be charging. If he's about to attack, you can roll, charge, roll, charge, 
you want to make sure that you're looking the right direction because now I can't get over that way. So you want to make sure that you turn and look, right? So roll, turn and look, roll, turn and look. So that's what I mean earlier when I was stating the axe is meant to stay right there on the behemoth. You can stand under Pangar Hellion by his feet. Every time he's about ready to kick, you just roll, you charge. Uh, the problem that I have a lot of the time is I'm always going for level 3, so I spend a lot of time dodging. But it, it pays off. I do pretty well. I can do a lot of fights under 3 minutes. Um, not heroic yet. But uh, the dyers and obviously the basics. Just by sitting here and going for 3s. Now the combo. Charge up. Hit the button again. Charge again. Vertical. The second one is an uppercut. And then you go into an overhead slam. Now, if you look at the move list, there's a repeatable. So after that overhead slam, as long as you have stamina, you can repeat it. This is all also affected by attack speed. Boom. We'll charge up. And then we'll go to the overhead and then the repeatable. And you'll watch my stamina bar deplete as I continue to do this. While you're doing this, you are also gaining meter the whole time. Okay, so if uh, you want to do that, it's nice. I kind of feel like if the behemoth is staggered and you do a charge, hit into a charge, into a hit, and then repeat that four hit combo is more beneficial than spamming the overheads. Uh, I definitely feel like I do a lot more damage with the charge hits than the repeated, the repeated hits. Uh, it's preference. I haven't sat down and written it down to find out exactly if it is more effective or not. Uh, the horizontals. Notice you did not get resolve on that. You didn't get the glowy orange thing. You get it on everything else. It's a three hit charge. Orange. The uppercut. One, two, three. Or whoop, whoop, whoop. I goofed. I goofed. How did I goof? One. Oh, by the way, you can do the combos without charging too. See, there's the uppercut, the overhead. The continuous overhead. So we'll go one, two. There you go. Okay, so you can do it on the uppercut, but you cannot do it on the first horizontal. Three. Boom. It's intentional. They did that intentional because the first charge of the horizontal, you can walk around while charging. You can hold it so you can close your gap. While you're holding it, look at my stamina meter. It's draining. And you can cleave with it and start it up. So if you need to get close, you're running in, you want to get in close. Uh, 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 uh. I'll tell you right now, that move is super weak and you don't get very much meter for it. But if you're beginning, it's pretty solid to get in close. If you're not good at dodging, like what I said, if you're up against the behemoth and you don't feel comfortable dodging through attacks and staying in close to it, uh, this is a good gap closer. If that's how you want to learn and practice, I suggest doing that. That's what I did for the first day. You can pair that with one of the mods that you can unlock called Lightweight Haft. And what that does is it allows you to move quite a bit faster. You'll notice that I'm a lot slower when you're charging. It also, when you get to this level, does not drain your stamina and you move almost twice as fast. So it's a good it's a good starting Starting ability if you're learning the axe to get in close and move around because you're gonna be running around trying to dodge You're gonna be dodging. I know you're gonna be dodging away. I dodge away instead of through your attacks But the second horizontal so we'll do that Second horizontal attack is this flip Yay! And this will have the resolve hit. Let me go ahead and get back into it again. I released it too late one two three boom so you have to release it almost right as you tick into your third. If you hold it too long, you do not get the resolve hit. And again, here's your level three horizontal. Boom, 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 resolve. Pow. Pow. That's the four hit quit for the horizontal. So verticals, you got a vertical tick, the poke, the uppercut, overhead slam into the repeatable. Yep. Horizontal, you got this cleave. Into a poke. It's the same poke. Into a flip. Into another flip. Yay! No repeatable. Now you can change. You can interchange these. If we go back to the move list. You can do the first two. So this one right here doesn't matter. The second attack is the same regardless of if you switch it. So if you start with a vertical, you can do a vertical or horizontal, and it will always be the same poke. 
But if you change it, you're gonna if you change if you go from vertical to horizontal, you're gonna go to horizontal and horizontal. You cannot go vertical, horizontal, vertical, horizontal. You can't. You have to once you swap from your your first attack, you can swap to the other one and continue through that cycle. So if you go horizontal, you can go vertical, 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 vertical. Or vertical, horizontal, horizontal, or you can go vertical, vertical, because the second one's the same attack, it doesn't matter. So if I was to go vertical, vertical, watch. It's a poke. If I go vertical, horizontal, it's a poke. Same move. Doesn't matter. If I can go vertical, vertical, horizontal, horizontal. I know it's a jumping vertical attack, but it's a horizontal attack. That's why I say light and heavy. Horizontal, into a vertical. 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 Feeling me? You got it? Uh, one of the things that I've noticed that I also uh, learned from Odo and other people uh, that I was looking at is for the most meter gain and for the most part the damage too is to do the two verticals or vertical horizontal. But to start with the vertical and then move into your horizontals. So you can do a vertical. That could be a vertical. Then the horizontal. Horizontal, right? So for those that are not colorblind, yellow, yellow, blue, blue. Or yellow, blue, 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 blue. You want to move. You want to start with your first. So you always walk into your target. Didn't mean to do that. What was that? Attack damage? Doesn't matter. So level three. Into a poke. Into a horizontal charge. Bam. Into another horizontal charge. Rinse and repeat. That's the combo that I always go for. That is what I play with 100% of the time. I rarely do this walking move anymore. I, I mean, you won't see me do this anymore. It's always a... A charge, and I need to learn to if I can't get a three off, and I know when the behemoth is going to attack. If I can only do a one, do a one just to get some damage in there, because I spend a lot of time playing with my behemoth and trying to get my third attack off, and that's wasted damage. Instead of trying, I need to learn on each behemoth when I can and when I can't. But right now, I'm trying to figure out how to get more attack speed so I can get those charges off sooner. That's pretty much it. That's pretty much it for the X. Um, I know it's information overload, but, uh, I, I feel like with the lack of combos on here, there was a lot more to the axe. Um, I originally actually had this recorded earlier. Uh, I was going to put up last week, but then I was watching, um, an Odo video on a build. That's how I stumbled across the resolve hit. I had no idea. I had no idea that this even, whoosh, that orange thing, what that meant. Didn't even know. Had no idea. So I did not upload the other video because that's huge. That's a huge part of the axe. So, oh no, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Not that you guys already have videos on this stuff, but... Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, another thing that I always cover is the dodge roll. So if you dodge roll with vertical, it's a poke. If you dodge roll with the horizontal, it's a poke. So you're basically actually skipping the first attack. Poke into an uppercut. So if you dodge roll, you are legitimately skipping your first attack, unlike the other ones where your dodge roll counted as your first attack. The dive roll is your first attack. Second attack, third attack, right? Uppercuts the third charge, or the second charge, and the same thing with the horizontal. The horizontal into... So keep that in mind. Keep that in mind when you're dive rolling. You can jump attack too. This is another thing I've seen. Um, Shadow Strider, another big YouTuber, was showing a move where he was fighting Reza, uh, and he was jump... Jump hitting. Or maybe it was Odo. One of the big boys was jump hitting Reza while Reza was in the air. So you can jump attack. You can jump vertical and you can jump. I can't. You, you can jump attack horizontal, right? And you'll notice that you slide. So you can actually gain distance too. When I'm chasing, chasing like Scrave, I'm, dude, that guy is so mobile. Uh, I do a lot of jumping attacks to close the gap, especially when he's around. So I jump and attack. That counts as hit number one. You can't charge it. But you'll notice, run, and you go into the poke when you land. Okay, horizontal, poke, into your third. The so jumping works too. Video is kind of long already. We'll go ahead and come in here and just show you a little bit of gameplay from a mediocre player. Uh, what a lot of us do is we open with the throw. Roar! Oh, I'm sorry, yeet is what I should have said, right? Charging, charging, dodge. Hey, he moves out of the way. I hate Nasher. He's out of range. I'll try to get in there with the, uh, see if I can get him. Resolve. Bam, oh, I didn't get him. It's charged up already. Notice my meter, the blue bar, is now it's yellow. Or yellow, white. It's ready to be primed. 
So we'll wait a second for my Grim Onslaught to be ready again or my special. And yeet. Now you notice that it has a level one. Has a level one. Watch how much meters gained. Boom. Boom. You also get a lot of meter from throwing it, but I'm not gonna throw it right now because we're almost at level two. Or er, ready to proc into level two. Okay. Come back. Throw it, hit level two. Bam! The axe is super strong, dude. It's it's orgasmic, right? So we'll proc, proc attack speed. Look how fast those are. I got molten and attack speed. It's gross. Gross, gross, gross. That's gross. It's amazing. It's amazingly gross. Uh, you'll also notice I didn't cover really quick. If you look at the meter bar, you'll see this solid line in the center. That's the meter that we're growing. When that gets full, it turns white, like we discussed earlier. You'll also notice there's colored energy on the top and the bottom. It's ticking down. If that ticks all the way to zero, your level two or level three or level four will drop back down to a nothing. So you have to continuously regrow your meter again. Whoop! That's a miss. But I caught it. You gotta continuously actually fight, otherwise you'll lose your buff. You'll lose your meter buff. Oh, one more thing on that same note. Uh, it caps out at level three. If you run, you stay there. You stay there. I'm not done with you. Get back. If you run overcharged cylinder, which you get at level three mastery for axes, you can get your determination. It's called determination. The stacks, the bonuses up four times. Okay. Uh, if you're soloing and you're pretty decent and you have a good, powerful build, you're going to kill the behemoth probably either right before you're ready to get to level four or right after you hit level four. So this is, um, this is good for pubs. Um, it's also good for longer fights, but if you know, you're going to kill it pretty fast in which you will most of the time, this is kind of a waste. Uh, volatile X core charge and attack deals AOE damage to nearby enemies at each charge level. I thought this meant that as you charge up and you do a charge attack, it does AOE splash damage. It doesn't. So as you're charging, you're actually ticking AOE damage. So watch this it's little damage. Boom. 32, 32, 32. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah. Yeah. Roar! It's awesome. The axe is amazing. The axe is amazing. I don't know. I, I, I played it for a couple days when the game launched. Did not like the axe. I love the axe. Not that I understand what it does and how it works. Uh, it's a slower, slower style of gameplay. It's rewarding when you learn how to do it. It's skillful. Uh, you really have to learn how to play the game. Uh, I... I, I, I feel like if you can master the axe going back to other weapons and learning how to... Because you have to dodge with the axe to play it properly. And that's how you should play the game. And a lot of the other weapons kind of allow you to move around a little bit more freely. So you build bad habits. If you can learn to play the axe decently, not expertly, but decently, I swear to you, it will up your game across all weapons. So definitely, definitely give the axe a chance. Plus, you want to be leveling everything up for mastery purposes and whatnot. But it's good. It's good. If you want to come hang out with me, I stream daily on Twitch at twitch.tv slash slightgumby, uh, usually between the hours of uh, 8 p.m. till about 2 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. That's West Coast United States. I, uh, we got Twitter if you want to follow for updates, notifications. I've got uh, website slightgumby.com, which has lots of good stuff coming and going off of there. And then I'm also a supporter creator, slightgumby. Pretty much slightgumby. Just Google slightgumby. Don't do that. Actually, don't do that. But um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye now.